What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I am Jeremy Lesniak, joined by, joined by Andrew Adams. And today we're talking about the problems with martial arts school marketing. Even if you don't have a school, you'll probably find something at least interesting about this conversation. So stick <laughs> around. If you want to see all the things that we do at Whistlekick, things we've been doing for years, go to whistlekick.com. It's our online home. You're going to find all the different things that we do there. One of the things we have there is a store. If you use the code PODCAST15, you can get yourself 15% off anything that we have there from uniforms to hats to hoodies to, well, if, if, the, if the warehouse space here was a little bit better organized, and it will be soon. I'm, I'm planning on cleaning this up soon. Uh, I would show you all kinds of things, but that's coming. Now, other things that we have available, whistlekickmarshmarchradio.com. It's the website for the show where we have transcripts and links. And for guest episodes, we have photos and videos and their social media and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you like the show, go check that out. While you're there, you can sign up for the newsletter. You could also leave us a tip because yeah, it costs money. I, I'm, I'm paying your gas. I'm paying your gas. It all adds up. It does. It all, it all adds up, right? We, we, this show doesn't come out of thin air. We work hard on it. So if you value it, consider helping us out. Other ways you can help out, whistlekickprograms.com. You can get a program that supplements your martial arts training for probably less than you think. You can grab one of our books on Amazon or the biggie, the Patreon, patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. We release exclusive content on there as well as merch that you're not going to find on the store. So if you support us, we're going to support you back. That's right. Absolutely. Instead of if you hit me, I'll hit you back. If you support no. me, I'll support, support you back. back. Yeah, and and from what I understand now, we're Patreon subscribers get free merch. Yeah, it's it, we didn't raise the prices. Yeah. We just threw merch on top of it. We're we are constantly looking at how we can improve and make things more valuable to the people on the other end of this. And we found a way that you know, yeah, it costs us money. It absolutely costs us money. But the hope is it'll bring more people in and join patreon because they say oh not only do i get this and this and this and this i also now get this pretty cool overwhelming value that is my business model and that's actually probably a really good lead in accidentally <laughs> absolutely overwhelming value. value yeah everything that we do in the world I, I i some of you may know outside of whistlekick one of the ways that i help fund all the things that we do is i'm a consultant most of the work that i do is in the marketing space and I believe you can see everything in the world from the perspective of marketing. If I sell you, Andrew, if I sell you this pen, if you pay $100 for this pen, it is because you believe that the value of this pen is greater than $100. Yep, it would be a good value exchange for me. And that's the key right there, value exchange. Mm. If you thought this pen was worth $50, you would not pay $100 for it. Nope. Everything that we do in life is based on that value exchange. If I part with my time, my money, my energy in some way. It is because I believe what I'm receiving back is more valuable. And people come up with all kinds of examples. Oh, but Jeremy, I didn't actually want to go to that family picnic. You value the relationships that I, would be compromised. I didn't want to pay my taxes last year. You value not going to jail more than the money you paid your taxes with. Yep. Everything can be looked at in this way. And so when we look at martial arts schools specifically a lot of them miss this idea this concept of pro providing and presenting the value that they provide mm -hmm. now this has given rise to a lot of companies and i i see them and i hear from them all the time and i'm trying to roll my eyes under this hat <laughs> And they're promising all these things. We're going to get you 200 new students in the next two months. I see it on Facebook. Not here, you're not. All the time. If I had a martial arts school, not here, you wouldn't. Any bold claim like that always sets me back. Hmm. Here's why. When I step in and I work on the marketing for any of my clients, some of which are martial arts schools, the things holding them back, the way they present their information, their goals for their business are all different. I have known martial arts schools that have no desire to be full-time. 
they have no desire to grow more than, you know, I want like five more students because the economics of that really changed things for me. I don't want 500 students. I've also, I also know there, there's a, uh, a martial arts school I'm working with right now that they are on track to open a second location. That's a really different presentation. Absolutely. That's a really different value proposition. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of today's episode is for me to vent a little bit, <laughs> as well as to give you out there some things to think about. Now, I've been blabbing. Do you have anything you want to chime in? Um, no, I, I, it definitely an observation that I have noticed within the last, I would say within the last year, and I don't know if it's directly related because of the pandemic that we have been in, but there are all the time now Facebook ads that I see that are exactly like you're describing. You know, we can get you bunches of students like joint look at our course. Um, and so it definitely has become more prevalent and more prominent. And maybe just the Google algorithms on my computer are noticing that maybe that's some of it, but, part of it. but it definitely has become a lot more prevalent for sure. Now there, there's, I don't know if I want to call it a, a hard and fast rule, but there is a guideline in the business world that when anybody promises you any result, they're probably lying. Hmm. If somebody shows up and they, they say, hey, we're going to get your business to page one of Google, they're either lying or they're doing it in fraudulent manner. Hmm. When someone says, we're going to get you 100 new students before they know what the population is, how many martial arts schools are in the area, what the general demographics are, what people charge, what martial art they're offering, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or, they're lying. Or it's not without knowing, possible to without knowing the instructor. The instructor without, could be a jerk. There are so many reasons why you cannot promise this. Yeah. And when those ads pop up on Facebook, I look at the comments. And one of two things goes on in those comments. There are comments that really seem to be planted Interesting. I haven't I, even looked at the that comments. I can't, I can't say for sure that they're not. I also can't say for sure that they are. Hmm. So I read them with some skepticism because it's such a short response that it really sounds like the type of thing a marketer would say, hey, can you make a comment with this? And they email them or they message them yeah. and say, paste this in. Interesting. Or you get others where... People are saying, but how are you going to do this? Send me more information. There, there's this general skepticism, but people are willing to, to try it. And engage. Yeah. Now, here's what we know. If there was some magic formula to get a whole bunch of new students into a martial arts school, we would probably have seen it used elsewhere in other activities for years, because as martial artists, we so value what we used to do that it's really, really hard to get people to pay attention to anything new. Yep. Uh, how do I know that? Uh, it's literally the, the story of my business. It's literally the whistle kick story, getting mm. people to look at doing something new and different. But we've always bought this from here. We've always done this this way. Oh. You wanna try something new? Ah. Martial artists are skeptical. We, we, it's the only industry we, we brag and think it is better to have not changed anything. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we would see that business model coming. We would see that secret formula coming. It doesn't exist. There is no secret formula. If there was a secret formula, everybody would be using it. Now those courses, those here's how to do all these things, these knowledge products that are out there, those have reached critical mass. The vast majority of them involve teaching people. I shouldn't say the vast majority. A lot of them involve selling a program to somebody, teaching them how to make their own knowledge product that mm -hmm. they can sell for you know, 500 or 1,000 or $10,000. When it comes down to getting someone in a martial arts school, there are only a handful of things that matter. Can, can you name some of them? <sighs> if I, let's... Let me make it a little more specific. Yeah, yeah, I'm a martial arts school. I'm looking to grow and I want more students. What are the things that I think about? What are the things that I can do to bring in more students? The things that you can specifically do marketing-wise? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, there, here's the, a hint. There are only two. Yeah. I mean, the, the old school one would be, you know, advertising print. 
you know, like putting it out in the paper or the olden days, it was phone book. Going direct right. to people who are not connected to your school. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then the other one would be, I would think friends and family of people that you already know. People encouraging word of mouth. Those are the yeah. only two ways. You get in front of them, you encourage the people that already know and value what you do to talk to other people. Those are the only two things. Hmm. If you think about it that way, yeah. every bit of social media, every bit of advertising falls into one of those two categories. Can you guess which of those two is far more effective? The word of mouth one, for sure. Yeah. So if you have a martial arts school and you're putting all of your money into social media advertising and newspaper advertising and the phone book, which by the way, those things are not dead. Depending on your region, those things are not dead. And you ignore encouraging your existing students to bring people in, you're messing up. Yeah, you're the, looking at it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of ways that you can do that. You know, it, it, it's, it's things like, you know, bring a friend night. And there are lots of, you know, cheesy and non-cheesy ways that you can do things like this. What gets people to actually sign up? If we take it back to the thing we said at the beginning, value, value. exchange, yep. what value are people deriving from training that makes them part with their time, energy, and money to take classes? Well, I mean, it could be a number of things. Yep. It, you know, it could be for some, it's, you know, learning some, just being involved in something that's historical and they enjoy that, right? Mm -hmm. That's value to some people. Some it's- There's an intellectual side. Yeah, exactly, yep. For, for some it's, uh, you know, if it's a, a parent having a kid involved, it's learning some discipline or mm -hmm. maybe it's just getting healthy and, you know, being, you know, better with their body and understanding how their body works. Personal development. Absolutely. Physical development. Yep. Those things can all play a factor mm -hmm. in, in value. Um, there are a couple more. Uh, you know, for some people are competition driven. And so they enjoy being a part of that and, you know, gaining some uh, psychological, I don't want to say advantage over others because that totally comes out wrong, but like being able to have a better mindset about competition, skill development, personal development. Yeah. Okay. I guess I can't think of a whole lot of others. Self-defense is, is, oh, yeah, fair, is sure, probably sure. The, the, big, the biggest one. That yeah. Yes. Yeah. There. There are only a few whys that people really have. They may express them differently, but if you can speak to those things, mm. you, you can nail them. You can, you can get those things down. And the, the irony is every martial arts program I've ever known has done all of these things. They've mm -hmm. had personal development. They've had skill development. They've had physical development. They've had a self-defense component. And I think the last one that we didn't talk about because most martial arts schools suck at doing it is building community. Yeah, community pops up organically, but how many schools actually foster it? Yeah, and how many work schools, to develop it. How many schools have a, a monthly or a quarterly, you know, potluck for after a Saturday morning training or something? Mm -hmm. or something to bring people together so they get the opportunity to say things like, "I didn't recognize you with clothes on," <laughs> which is which is a common, at least when I when I was growing up, was a common thing that we would say in my dojo because we only saw people in their in, in their, their gi. gi. Yeah. Yep. Right. And and so. I, I've heard that said in a number of different ways now. Now, given that we've, we've just talked about what martial arts marketing is, and I spent the top of the episode really pooping all over what's being done out there, why don't those things necessarily connect? Is it possible that some of these people on Facebook really have some secret sauce and they, they have you know, they know what questions to ask martial arts schools, and they're really able to help them out in a, in a great way. It's possible. Doubtful? It's doubtful. Yeah, but it's possible. Doubtful. And here's why I say that. Because I know the economics of Facebook advertising. Oh, see, I don't. I know that if I spend, let's put it this way. Let's say I spend $100 a month on Facebook ads. Okay that has to result in a hundred dollars in profit. Yeah. Every person that responds to my offer, you know, I'm going to help you get 750,000 new students. Wow. Awesome. I better build a big, bigger dojo. Gonna, gonna need a bigger boat. Every person who responds to that is not necessarily going to sign up. So that hundred dollars on ads means that if I get one person to respond, 
I only need to get $101 from them. But if two people are interested and I only get one of them, now I have to make sure that I'm working those numbers. Okay. That person who signs up has to do $100 or both of them have to do 50. Mm -hmm. Right. If I spend $500 on ads, now I have to get five people signed up. Yep. Okay. Most of these programs I'm seeing, they're not $100 a month. I, because I, I, I know what they're paying for these words. Remember, because I do this advertising for people. Oh, yeah. And so I see that they're, most of them seem to be spending hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars a month in order for the economics to work. Now, let's assume that they're good at business. Because if they're not good at business, why would they keep doing it? They that? shouldn't be helping you. Yeah. Well, let's fair. give them the benefit of the doubt that they are good at business. They are going to use that, that Facebook ad to overwhelmingly make money. The more encouraging the free offer, quite often the higher the price on the other end mm -hmm. because they're trying to get you down this, this path. Hooked in. How do we get people to try martial arts? We don't say, okay, buy a uniform and a belt and six private lessons and sign up for six months in advance. We don't say that. What do we say? No, we typically say, come and try a couple classes for free. Yeah, the free offer. We get them in the door. We can yep. showcase what we do, that we do well, and hopefully they will stick around and they'll spend some money. And if we can do that affordably, we succeeded. It works. You still have to consider those economics. So now that I've taken a bunch of shots hmm. at martial arts, these martial arts marketers, the obvious, there are two kind of obvious questions, maybe three. One, Jeremy, why are you taking shots at these people when you do something similar? Two, Jeremy, how do we know that you're not just blowing smoke mm -hmm. and you know you suck at this? Or you whatever, don't know what you're talking about. Right. Uh, and three, how can I do it the right way or better way? Yeah. So the first thing, I'm not calling anybody out by name. I try not to do that. I really try not to do that. Uh, there is a part of me that has wanted to invest in what these people offer so I can do some big expose and we, point out the ones that work and don't. We need more Patreon for that. <laughs> I'm not spending thousands of dollars out of my own pocket <laughs> to prove whether or not these people know what they're doing. Sorry. Can I, can I interject though? Please. If a Patreon subscriber wants to pay $1,000 for us to investigate it. If somebody wants to commission we, a study into this, we, I will yep. by all means do it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Two, Jeremy, what makes what you do different? Most of my marketing comes from word of mouth. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you track down my consulting website, you might think, huh, for somebody who makes websites, this is kind of weak. That's not how I get my customers. I know what I need to do. Well, and, we, and I would say we, okay, we don't make any claims that we can do anything for you. Yeah. Yeah. We... We work hard, I work hard, the team works hard to handle things on a case-by-case -case basis. Because we're not running this big system, we don't want to. Mm -hmm. okay. Long-term, we're, we're going to make our money it's selling stuff. You know, we'll, Yeah, we will maintain some of the consulting stuff, but that, that's really not where we should be. And then the last thing was, what did I say? Uh, uh, what can we do? What can schools do? Okay. Here are a few things you can do. Number one. Focus on the word of mouth stuff. First, let your students know that you want more students. Tell them, hey, I'd like to see five more people in here. Maybe you incentivize them. Yeah. If you can bring somebody in for a free trial and they sign up, I'll give you a free month. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Two, getting involved in the community. Some manner of social connection, whether that's a demonstration, a uh, self-defense seminar, um, a potluck where people can bring friends, a kid's, you know, lightsaber day where they can bring people off the street. There are so many ways that you can do this. If you focus on how can I deliver more value to my existing students mm -hmm. in such a way that people adjacent to them, because those are the people that are going to come in the easiest, yep. hear about it, participate in it, find some value, get involved. Here's a great one. Run a 5K as a school 
every mm-hmm. every town i know of small town big town doesn't matter has these little 5k races all the time some kind of charity yeah yep that and you know they're usually very inexpensive to participate in mm-hmm. and if you as a school can go to the 5k all wearing your dojo t-shirt or whatever sure. i'm not saying run in your gi don't do that but you know you are advertising you've got 15 20 people there at this race all wearing the same t-shirt right hey that seems like a cool group of people they seem like they're having fun they seem like they enjoy talking to each other maybe i want to get involved and how much does that cost the school well i guess probably nothing well i mean the school could i guess pay for everyone's entrance to the 5k probably not you're going to just say hey it's not a required thing, but we're going to run this as 5K. School, we're going to run this 5K. And so I, as the instructor, am out the cost of whatever cost me, myself, right. to enter the 5K. And that's a, that's a perfect example. And so we should probably leave that there because I the, the takeaway I want for people is to consider where is the value? Am I communicating the value? How do I make sure other people are interested in what we are doing enough that they are willing to hear about the value proposition. Yep. If you walk down the street and you start off by saying, come to Jeremy's martial arts school, it's only six dollars. Right. It's what? <laughs> exactly. But not that this would go well, but it would go much better. Hey, would you be interested in hearing about martial arts classes? Hmm, maybe. Right. Still probably gonna be a no, but far more likely than let me throw it yes. our value proposition at you, right? You, you've got it, you've got to create that opportunity where people are interested to learn so you can present it to them and all the better if you can find automatic ways to present it like training all of your students hey if you hear somebody talk about wanting to do learn self-defense or meet a cool group of people or 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 make sure you mention the school right stuff like that anything anything we should add no i think it's good giving value for sure now because i'm always willing to open up this platform to people especially when i indirectly throw shade at them (laughs) if you are or are connected to one of these various martial arts school marketing programs that are flooding my facebook feed right now or if you've done one or if you've done one i want to hear from you let's chat we can chat informally we can probably chat privately and if there's enough there if you convince me that what you're doing is that different, I'll probably share what you're doing publicly because I don't mind doing that. That'd be free marketing for them. Free marketing. The what we we are sometimes referred to as the number one martial arts podcast. At least feed, is it Feedly, Feedzy, Feedspot, Feedspot. Content wise, I think for sure, Feedspot calls us the, the the top martial arts podcast. So we're doing mm-hmm. something right. Okay, at least according to them. If you want to reach out to me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com or social media is at whistlekick everywhere you can think of. Best ways to support us. Patreon. Buy a book on Amazon. Buy a program at whistlekickprograms.com. Buy something at whistlekick.com using the code podcast15, like Andrew's hat. My hat right here. I don't think we I don't think the snapback. That's a snapback. Yeah. It? Yeah. I don't think that the uh, the stretchy one I don't is exactly the same that's up there right now because we change things from time. If you've got topic suggestions, guest suggestions, I want to hear them. And most importantly, thank you. Thanks for your support. Thanks for all that you do for the show, for Whistlekick, for the martial arts community. Anything else? No, I think that's good. Until next time, train Train hard, hard, smile, and have have a great great day. day.